good to be here today. Uh, my name is Oe. It's O T E Y, and Cheryl's here with me. So uh, we're thankful to be here. We are uh, part of Fellowship Bruce Park. I guess just a few miles or kilometers that way. Uh, so we're close. So we've been in Toronto for just a little over a year now. It's good to be here. Uh, we we really confuse people. Uh, one of the things I like to ask people whenever I, I meet them here in Toronto is, uh, where was your home before Toronto? Uh, I know we're in Pickering right now, but so I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk uh, uh, about uh, Toronto in terms of this, this big area that Pickering. Uh, maybe claims to be a part of, I don't know, do you claim to be a part of Toronto or do you prefer to just be Pickering? Prefer to just be Pickering? So I should leave Toronto over there and just talk about Pickering today. Okay, I'll try, I'll try to do that. Uh, so, but I ask people, so where did you live before moving here? And I really like to throw people off because then they want to know, well, where, did, where did I move from? And I said, well, I moved here from China. And they're like, you know, you don't look Chinese, and uh, you're, not, you're not Chinese. How's that, that possible? So that's uh, that opens up opens up some fun conversations. So this morning, I am going to talk about some of the things that we did in China in terms of being God's ambassadors in China and Taiwan for uh, 20 plus years. Uh, and we're going to talk about being uh, ambassadors for Christ here in Pickering. Uh, so uh, to do that. We're going to look together at uh, in the Bible at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So if you have a Bible, either in the book form or on a tablet form or on your phone form, uh, just turn there and look there with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, one of the, and you, feel free to, to read with me if you want to. Uh, one of the things I really like about the Asian culture that we experienced in China and Taiwan was whenever they read the scripture, everyone just, uh, whenever the pastor is, is, is uh, bringing the sermon, everyone just reads the scripture together. So feel free if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, Cheryl will. Uh, we, we throw uh, Pastor Caseman off with that sometimes. Uh, we'll just start reading the scripture. Everyone will turn around and look at us, and we're just—it's just a part of who we are with our culture right now. So, verse starting with verse uh, fourteen, uh, starting with verse yeah, with fourteen, in First Corinthians chapter, Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, for Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So, from now on, we regard no one from a, from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us a message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Uh, all right. Uh, if, if I, uh, if we were in a, uh, a group like with college students, I used to work with college students before I moved to China. That's my previous life uh, with the campus ministry. And I, it, in a, at this point, I would give you a, a, a lump of, of a, in the U.S., we call it Play-Doh. Is there Play-Doh here? In, okay, Play-Doh. This uh, kid's toy clay stuff. I'd give you that and say, okay, you know, uh, take this lump of clay and 
and make something out of it that's in your mind. Uh, you know, and I would I could make a stick figure because I'm not very artistic, but some people can make beautiful flowers and and all kinds of, of neat creations. Um, and that's what that's what we see a picture here of in Second Corinthians is that uh, God takes us as kind of a, a lump of clay dough, and He uh, makes us into a new creation where we become new people through Christ Jesus. And I, I just like that picture of uh, thinking about myself as becoming something beautiful and, and, and attractive and uh, wonderful that uh, is pleasing to God. And that's what God's doing in my life. So in that, being a new creation, there are some privileges that I have and that you have, that we have, who are in Christ. There's some privileges and some responsibilities. So we're going to look just for a few minutes about those privileges and those responsibilities. And then we're going to, to go from uh, those privileges and responsibilities for us and our life and our work here in Pickering. And then we're going to go to Asia and then we'll, we'll come back to here. So we'll kind of go around the world like that. Um, Privileges for us who are in Christ. I've already talked about the first one, and that's that, that we are new creatures. We're, we're being transformed, and it's an, an ongoing transformation. So think with me for a few minutes about some of the transformations that have happened in your life because of your reconciliation to God through Christ. And I'm, I'm not going to go around the room with the mic and say, okay, now tell us, tell us what those are, but... But perhaps you might think, uh, as I do, I might, you might say, okay, uh, I am a lot less angry person than I used to be. Uh, I, I used to let, let anger really come out of my life. It came out of me just real easily over a lot of things. And I, God has, is doing an ongoing work in my life to, to take this anger out of my life and make me a, a, a gentle person. Um, I, I'm, a, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a selfish person uh, by nature, just in terms of my, my orientation of who I am. But with, with God's work in my life and transformation, I, I am uh, less and less selfish, where I think of other people and I consider the needs of other people. Um, I'm, I'm a much uh, more gentle person because of God's work of transformation in my life. I'm more gentle with uh, and how I respond to Cheryl, uh, how I respond to my children, how I respond to other people. I'm more gentle. So, so you can you can think about that for your own self. And if you if you have time and you're given time, then you can really reflect and say, Wow, God is doing a transforming work in my life. And the the great thing is is that that's not finished yet. That I am continuing to be transformed along with you. That's one great privilege. The other one is, is that I'm reconciled to God. Uh, and I, I belong to God. Uh, I'm a part of God's family. Uh, for if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new is coming. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself, himself through Christ. So uh, God cares for me. He holds me. He, he, because of his work in your life, he holds you. And th that's a... Uh, to, to belong to God and to be held by God, the, the Creator God, the God of the universe, that is a, a great privilege that, that you and I have by, because we are reconciled to Him. I'm a new creation. I'm reconciled to God. Uh, I, a story that comes to my mind to, to kind of illustrate that. Um, yesterday I was at a fall festival with Eternal Word Church. And there was a woman that is not a believer. She was there to be a part of this fall festival. And she just enjoyed being there. The fellowship, uh, talking with the people that were at this fall festival, enjoying the fun, the activities. She heard the gospel like three, four, five times from different people who, interact, who interacted with her over this period of two hours. But at the end, she said, wow. It is so nice to be here and to be a part of this, this family and to have this great feeling. She goes, I, I, if I could believe this and I could 
I could just really have this all the time. And that's, that's, that's the privilege we have of being in God's family and being this family together is that, that feeling that, that Helen wanted and, and, uh, and, and we pray that she will have that. We, we're going to pray for her here as we go through the day. We're going to pray for Helen and other people that, that she will be able to know that, that being reconciled to God so she can have that always present feeling of being held by God and being loved by God. Fourth privilege is, the third, I'm sorry, the third privilege is that our sins aren't counted against us. So, um, God was rec reconciling us to uh, himself through Christ, not counting men's sins against them. Um, sometimes when things are just really good, you have this, this kind of, uh, wow, can you pinch me? Because I can't really believe this is true. Uh, sometimes when, when we were in China and uh, I would have an uh, opportunity to be sharing with someone or, or training a group of pastors and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, could, you, did, could someone pinch me? Is this really true? I'm, I, just yesterday I was on this tractor driving, plowing the, the farm field in Oklahoma. And here I am in China, speaking Chinese, which is a miracle of God in, in and of itself. Uh, uh, and, 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 and sharing with someone in China, I'm like, just, just, just pinch me. So this can't be true. That, that's the, that's what it's, when we think about this, that my sins aren't counted against me, I'm clean. And it's like, can you really just pinch me? Is that true? My, my sins aren't counted against me? How can that be? I, I can't, that's just a, a great, almost incomprehensible con concept. Um, and then the, the fourth privilege we have is that we are God's righteousness. So it's like God, God has a tent here, and and we are in that tent with Him, and His holiness. Uh, there used to, when you, when you think about God's holiness, that, that separates man from from God because He's so perfect. Uh, we have that righteousness in our lives because of Christ, and we have that that kind of relationship with God. So those are our privileges, that we are new creations, our sins are not counted against us, we're reconciled to God, and we have God's righteousness. Now, uh, with, with great privileges, there comes responsibility. Uh, I, you tell parents, you tell this to your kids all the time. With, uh, with the privileges of having freedom, of uh, having uh, allowance, with having Responsibilities come, uh, th th there comes responsibilities. You have to be responsible for these things. So we have these privileges, but also God commits to us some responsibilities. Um, so the, the first responsibility is that we live our lives not for ourselves, but for Christ Jesus himself. So what, what does this look like um, to uh, really, really live with God's purposes? Um, I was thinking about uh, a conversation Cheryl had uh, just a few days ago. She uh, had some neighbors in our home and they were relating about, about the things that are important to, to them. Uh, they said, we live to make money. They were just, she was real clear, the lady was real clear. We, that's, that's, that's why we're here on earth is to make money and to enjoy the pleasures that, that money will bring. So, for those of us who are in Christ, uh, we are challenged in, uh, in verse 15. So, uh, verse 16, so from uh, verse 15, and, and he died for all, and those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died, and for them who died for them and is raised again. So, and so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. So we uh, live our lives for Christ, and we consider people from God's perspective. Now, th those are kind of big, fluffy concepts. So let's see if we can bring that, that down to 
uh, ways that, at least that I can understand, and maybe help us all understand. Um, when, when, when you go on and, and, and you read the rest of 2 Corinthians, either before and after, you, you see that uh, Paul is writing to the church saying, don't, I don't want to be a stumbling block to people before Christ. So I'm thinking about them and thinking about helping people come to Christ. And so I think about my neighbors in a way that will help draw them to Christ as opposed to thinking about uh, I, I want them to, uh, to keep their yard like I want them to keep it. I want them to uh, not, not bother me with their noise. But I, I don't think about my neighbors from my desires and wants, but I think about my neighbors and say, what is it that will, will draw them to Christ? Um, and at your home, uh, I, I don't know about you, you guys, but for me, my first inclination is to think about what I want. I want to watch, uh, I want to watch this football game. I, 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 you might not can relate to that because college football is not as big of a deal here in, in, uh, in Canada, but where I'm from in the U.S., college football is a, is a, is a big deal. And, uh, and so I come home from, from a stressful time, and I, I want to come in and watch college football. Well, Cheryl, she likes college football, but she would prefer to watch a, sh a show, and it's a show you don't it's just a mindless show. It's called That Girl. It's, it's, it's an old, old, old show that was, that was made before any of you were probably born. But it's just a funny, silly show, That Girl. And so what's interesting sometimes is Cheryl's trying to think about things from my perspective. I'm trying to think about things from her perspective. It's like, no, you go ahead and watch That Girl, and I'll watch football later. She's like, no, no, you can go ahead and watch football now. I know you're tired, whatever, and I'll, I'll watch That Girl later. So so the, the point of that is, is that whether it's for our, 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 our spouses, our kids, or our, our neighbors, that we try to think about, about their needs and their desires. We think about what would draw them to Christ as opposed to thinking about things from our own selfish perspective. So those are responsibilities we have. And then we have the responsibility of sharing the message of reconciliation, about helping people know about how they can have God's transformation in their life, how they can have God's forgiveness of their sin in their life. So that's our the our responsibility. Um, an ambassador is someone who's an official representative. Think about the, the uh, ambassador of, of Canada to uh, I don't know where where does Canada what, what's a an important country that Canada has an ambassador in right now? I'm not familiar with the country. Where the U.S. Okay, so. I guess that's important that we have a good relationship with U.S. So we have, who is the ambassador for U.S.? Anyone know? I don't know. Okay, let's say, let's say we knew who that was right now. We could betray that person. His job or her job is to be in the U.S. and to represent us, the Canadian people, to the United States. That's, that's, a, that's a big job to, to do that. It's a hard job to be an, an ambassador. Uh, in college, I was a college ambassador. Uh, when I was a senior, I was an ambassador to represent the Uni Oklahoma State University to fresh uh, high school students who were thinking about coming to that university. So I, I talked to them and, and sh shared with them about the university. I was the, rep the university representative for those students. So in the same way, we, we are Christ ambassadors. He gives us, he commits us to us that responsibility. It's amazing he does that. He trusts us. And he, 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 he allows us to be a part of that. Because that's a big thing to be an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to other people. And, uh, but that's a responsibility he gives us because of the privilege we have of being, uh, our sins being forgiven and being related to God through him. Um, so uh, carrying out those responsibilities uh, let's look just for a few moments about the motivations for that. Now, when you think about, about motivations, uh, what is it that moves you to action? Um, a few times a day, I'm moved to action to the dining room table. Cheryl's a great cook. She's prepared a wonderful meal, and I'm hungry. So because of that 
motivation of hunger and wanting to enjoy the meal that Cheryl's prepared, I go sit at the dining room table and, and eat. Um, sometimes I'm motivated uh, to do something out of interest. There was a period of time in my life when I was interested in running a marathon. That seems bizarre right now, but I was. And so that motivated me to run many miles a week, that desire to run a marathon. Now, um, I've watched your pastor uh, over the past year. I don't know him well, but I've watched him. And I've watched his motivation to care for Wayland. He, he really is tender towards Wayland, and he uh, has a great love for Wayland. And he, he attends to him, and he, has, uh, he, he meets his needs, and he uh, comforts him, because he takes these actions because of his, his love for, for Wayland. And so um, it's that kind of love that God wants us to have for people in our, around us, in our lives, that... Um, that move us to take the action of sharing the gospel. Uh, John 3.16, you guys know John 3.16? Most of us do, I don't have it up here. Let's see if we can, just say it, I know you, have, you memorize it from different versions, it doesn't matter what version, let's just say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So that talks about God's motivation. God's motivation, His love for us, motivate Him to take the action of, of giving us Christ so Christ would live and die and then be raised again for our sins so we can be reconciled to God. That's God's motivation for us. So uh, that's the orientation of, uh, of motivation. Um, Cheryl, I, I don't know where I'm at on this PowerPoint, so I'm just going to talk right now. You've got to kind of figure me out, you guys. got to figure me out back there, okay? Um, um, so some other, some, other, some other motivations, because not just from love, but uh, they, they come from uh, God committing to us that responsibility. Sometimes we, we do things because we're told to do them. Uh, especially when we're a child, at least we should, uh, or if we're at work, uh, we're told to do something, we do it, because that's our responsibility. In the same way with our relationship with, with God, He's committed to us, so that our responsibility is like a command. He says, okay, you know, this is a part of what you do. Uh, it, it's your job, it's your responsibility, I expect you to go do that. So, and then another aspect of that is our, our regeneration, because we are regenerated, and we have new lives, we want other people to also have, have have that same great re regenerated life that we have. And then also because of love. Now, I don't know about you, but I sometimes struggle with the motivation of loving other people that I don't know too well. I really struggled with this in, in China, Cheryl can tell you this. And I used to, to really ask God, help me with that. Because I'm, I'm here in China, I am uh, I'm an ambassador of Christ. And I'm walking across the street with my kids, who are who are two, who are three, six, and nine at the time, and 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 the traffic does not obey the rules. And so we're walking across the street, and the car starts to like just mow us down. Well, I take my umbrella because it rains a lot where we were, and I, take, and I start whacking the car, and I'm like, that's probably not a good testimony of being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Who is this guy who's whacking the car? Oh, someone said that he, he is a Christian. He's trying to share God's love with people here in the neighborhood. And what? Well, that doesn't look too much like a loving person to me who's whacking the car with his umbrella. So um, I, I, I sometimes struggle to think about the other person and loving them the way God wants me to love them. So that's where I need... I need God's help in my life. Um, and that's where I need to put myself before God and ask Him to continue to help me with that motivation of love to look at my neighbor, look at my coworker, look at my family member who I'm just so frustrated with and say, God, will you help me have love for that person? 
Um, we have the responsibility of being the messenger of God's love, the messenger of God's forgiveness of sin and reconciliation to God as Christ's ambassadors. Who are some of the people in your life that you can name right now uh, who you should orient your life towards from God's perspective? Um, just, if you've got a pen, jot a person down. So, uh, who are some people that you know that don't know Christ? Some neighbors? Um, some people at work? Some family members? Maybe someone in this room? Uh, who, who, who's without Christ? Who doesn't have the same regenerated life that you have? Uh, I think of uh, Helen, who I mentioned that was at this carnival yesterday. I think of my neighbor, Mr. Pan, uh, who, who doesn't know Christ at all. And I think of a student at York University, Reagan, who I've shared the gospel with. Um, I think of Tim, uh, my neighbor who's moved but uh, is, is, is without Christ. So who are some of those people uh, that you know that are without Christ? And so... We can pray and ask God to help us have a perspective towards those people of, 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 of love, of caring for them. It comes not from me, it comes from God's work in my life. God's work of love in my life. Um, and then praying for those people. I want us to think just for a minute about praying for those people who don't know Christ and what to pray for them. So let's look at Colossians chapter 4. Verse 2 through 6, and it's on the screen up here. Colossians chapter 4, 2 through 6. Are we there? Yes. Okay. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in shame. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should, and be wise in the way you act towards outsiders to make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So some real specific things from this scripture that we can pray for people like Reagan and Helen and Tim and Mr. Pan and the people you wrote down, people in your mind. We can pray for the preparation in their heart that they will be prepared to, their hearts be prepared to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can pray for an opportunity. You'll say, Lord God, help me have another opportunity to share with Helen, to share with Reagan. Please, God, give me that opportunity. And then, God, help me have boldness. Because if you do pray and ask for opportunity, then God's going to erase that opportunity. So when the opportunity comes, then ask God, Lord God, help me be bold, as, as Paul says. That I may proclaim clearly. Help me proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Proclaim that. And... God, help me be bold and help me be clear so I can share the gospel in a way that, that Helen can understand, that, uh, that Reagan can understand. So that's the, that's the word from 2 Corinthians 5 to us about being ambassadors here in Pickering. I want to share just a little bit. I want to, I want to go to China for a few minutes and, and share with you a little bit about the opportunity that we had uh, and I'll, then I'm going to end with how you are a part of international missions by who you are as a church here at Fellowship Pickering. So, so as you think about what we did in China and other people in missions are doing around the world, you, you're going to see how you're a part of that here at Fellowship Pickering. So uh, there's a picture of China and uh, you see the, the vast place it is. Uh, uh, one and a quarter billion people um, and um, while we were there just going to mention a few things that we, we, we really the last few years that we, we got to do that just were a lot of fun so we, we left, we left uh, China South China and, uh, at the very beginning of COVID in uh, the first of February of 2020 uh, in those last years, we were getting to work with people like uh, Stanley in this picture. It's a new church start. So it's a, a church, um, I, it was like, like what I'm going to do here in, uh, 
in the greater Toronto area, getting to work with, with young pastors like Stephen Shu and, and Seth and Jonathan, helping, helping them think about, about what they're doing in their church planning and support, supporting them and encouraging them. So that's what I was doing uh, for those last few years in, in China. And then, and then you get to see some of the fruits of that. Uh, this picture of this baptism was, was uh, happened right after we had to leave China. Uh, Stanley and this church had this group of, of I think it was eight people who were baptized. And so we got to, got to see some of that fruit uh, from those churches that we got to work with. And then uh, the, um, uh, the other thing I, I got to help work with, uh, equipping some pastors, uh, like you see in this, uh, in this uh, picture, people like uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. C and uh, Mr. L, uh, and uh, again, Stanley, just getting to equip them through, uh, through study and discipleship and through uh, theological training to help them be effective in, in their ministry. And then the, the last thing we've got to do, which, which really grieves my heart that, that, that we don't get to do that anymore in China, is uh, the church in China, as you grow in, in, in being an ambassador, uh, you naturally grow to think about the rest of the world. That's just what happens. And so the church in China was beginning to think about international missions. And so we got to be a part of helping equip some of the, the young people uh, who, are, who are coming uh, up to the church there in China in discipleship to prepare them to go to other countries as international uh, uh, mission workers. Uh, so that was our, our privilege for those 23 years in, in China and Taiwan. Uh, and a few things that you can pray for. Uh, when you go back to the other slide, Cheryl, uh, prayer, these pastors, we're gonna pray in just a minute. I'm gonna ask you to be at your table and pray some of these things for these pastors in China. They will have integrity according to God's word at work in, in their lives. And they will lead ministry with God's wisdom and they'll develop young ministers. Uh, that, that they themselves will develop young ministers. And then I want you to pray some of those things for the people that uh, um, that you wrote down or that's in your mind that, that they you know, pray for some of those people that they though, that you'll be bold, that you'll seek, that you'll look for the opportunity. God will arrange the opportunity that they've got to prepare their hearts. So, well, in just a minute, but if you can go to the last slide, Cheryl, um, we're how does this work together in terms of cooperative missions? Uh, fellowship Pickering is a part of this fellowship network of churches, which is also a part of the Canadian uh, Association of uh, National Baptist Churches, Canadian National Baptist Association of Churches. So when you, you give an offering, some of that offering goes to uh, this church, but some of it goes on to, to the Canadian Convention, and then some of that money goes to international missions. So uh, Baptists that you're a part of in this association of churches have a, a program called the Cooperative Program where it's a cooperative missions where churches give mission dollars together and then those dollars come together to support missions all around the world. So with the money you give through cooperative missions and once a year there's an opportunity called a Great Commission offering, the, those financial resources support uh, over 3,500 mission personnel all over the world in 220 different countries. So uh, you get to be a part of that just by being, just responding and, and, and giving through your natural process of giving tithes and offerings that, that you have as a, as a part of Fellowship Pickering. Um, and of course, you 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 can pray for missionaries who you know personally. And if you don't know some missionaries to pray for in different parts of the world, uh, please contact us, uh, and we'd be happy to help connect you with some some missionaries who would appreciate your your personal prayer for them and their mission endeavors. So thank you as a church body for your being willing to. To be in the harvest. I, I noticed that uh, as you're going through the announcements, you guys are are active in the harvest here. Uh, you're 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 looking for opportunities for how you as a church can can be in the harvest here in Pickering. And I know your heart is to let 
God move you towards people's lives that you can share with about the God who has changed you and transformed you. And, and then as you grow in your understanding of, and participation in international missions. So one more thing I have to, have to do is to, is to challenge you to think about could God be asking you to do something besides be here uh, at, in, in Pickering? Uh, I, I'm just a normal, average person from a farm in Oklahoma. Uh, just grew up hauling hay and plowing and building fences and branding cattle and giving them medicine. Just And God asked me and Cheryl to move our family to China. And I don't understand that because I'm, I'm not a great linguist. I, I, I didn't just jump all over the Chinese language. Um, it, it was hard work. But God had me be there and used us there. I don't know how, but he did. Uh, and uh, so perhaps God might be saying to someone here, you know, could you consider being somewhere else in the world and being one of my ambassadors? 